Can absolute silence exist on planet Earth? No. This is probably familiar to everyone, but there are specially designed chambers with powerful protection against sound. The only thing is that the key word is artificial. It was created by humans. Anyway, there are still a lot of voices in the natural terrestrial environment invention. But what about space? Is it possible for the universe to be completely silent? Hello. When we admire the starlight, mesmerized by the eternal planet's rotation, we rarely think about the sound aspect. Moreover, blockbuster filmmakers have accustomed us to believe that the howling of bullets fired from space blasters, the epic explosions of stars, and the collisions of interplanetary shuttles are accompanied by heart-wrenching sounds. Many people take this on faith, mistakenly imagining space to be a rather noisy place. It's not, although the universe does have a voice. To begin with, there is some theory. Sound is elastic waves that propagate through a liquid, solid, or gaseous medium. In the latter case, it's air. The human ear perceives these vibrations, but it's impossible in a vacuum. So what's the origin of the space music which is often heard on the NASA web portal. For example, this is not the noise of a deadly terrestrial hurricane, but the eerie voice of a black hole. Let's reveal a simple truth. If there is no air in space, it doesn't mean that there are no wave vibrations such as electromagnetic. The second nuance, vacuum is a kind of atmosphere only very rarefied. Absolute vacuum is a myth. It does not exist in the universe. The apparent emptiness is filled with dust particles and hydrogen atoms. If the vacuum is not empty, there should be sounds in it, but there is somehow dead silence, and even the explosions of huge stars are completely silent. Such fact is surprising only in Earth conditions and for beings having hearing organs. But this is not the only way to perceive the world around you. Remember, even on our planet, there are bats that can sense vibrations beyond our capabilities. The range of sound perceived by the human ear is from 20 to 20,000 hertz. The same range also includes the of Miriameter radio band. We cannot hear them, but it is in our power to translate such vibrations into human language. All it takes is to convert electromagnetic vibrations into radio waves and send them to the headphones. Then the speaking space will open up to a person. It's an amazing experience that everyone should have because conversations of planets, stars, black holes are very substantial and do not resemble each other. Some of them cause eerie associations. Some make you feel threatened and some evoke involuntary awe. By the way, the first space voices were recorded by Voyager and later NASA, inspired by the translation, released a disc with a variety of sounds in space. The Hubble channel offers viewers an indescribable range of emotions when listening to the cosmic voices converted into sounds audible to us. First, I would like to present the voice of the sun the main star that gives us the opportunity to live comfortably on the planet. Its voice is like millions of drums beating in unison and merging into a mystical, eternal, mesmerizing hum. Speaking of distant stars, the last song of the dying red giant, R. Sculptoris, one and a half thousand light years away, is remarkable. Since such a finale after five billion years awaits our sun, the voice of the fading star is especially interesting for Earthlings. Astronomers from Atacama recorded the radio emission of R. Sculptoris and created from it a composition analogous to a music box. The sound is like raindrops falling from a tree branch into a metal vase or chaotic lazy touches on the keys of a piano. The gradual fading of the star awakens longing plunging into meditations on the eternal. 
Jupiter's voice is as impressive as the planet itself. It is like an alarming bell chime. In some places, the sound turns into howling and rumbling, as if the wind is blowing through empty sewers. Sometimes the voice of the planet is like a distant ocean surf. After listening to it comes a feeling of loneliness and lostness. The Jupiterian song was even mentioned in Arthur C. Clarke's Space Odyssey. Every cosmic body has its own voice. This otherworldly howl comes from Saturn and its many rings. That measured quiet noise, like the breath of the sea, or the sound of an airplane flying in the distance, is the voice of Neptune. The satellites of the planets also echo each other. Ganymede's magnetosphere sings with the voices of Earth's thunder. Their rumblings can be heard clearly in the universal wasteland. If you go very far into space, you can hear the pulsars. Their voices sound like machine gun fire or a giant stenographer hitting a giant typewriter. Finally, let's demonstrate what the Earth sounds like from space. Above the oceans, the sound is like a hum, as if you were leaning your ear against a large seashell. Above mountains and ice caps, you can hear a noise similar to the howl of the wind at the top of Mount Everest. And above the burning lights of the continents is a mix of sounds, among which one hears voices similar to the squeak of sirens, the chirping of birds, the humming of wires. The voices of space can be listened to endlessly. They awaken something long forgotten, ancient, deeply hidden in man under the influence of civilization. Let yourself go free. Listen to the music of the universe. Well, that's the short version of it. We are very pleased that you enjoy, love, learn new things. The Hubble Channel would love to help you do just that. And for this, you just need to put a huge thumb up under this video, click on the button subscribe, and wait for the next video. And it's coming soon. Really, really soon.